Now let's take a look at the asymptotes of a hyperbola. We'll begin with a hyperbola that is horizontal. So starting with 0, 0 for our center, remember we'll move to the right a distance of a, and that's going to get us a vertex, and likewise we can move to the left that same distance of a to get our second vertex. So that's not going to change. a is always going to be the distance from center to vertex. distance from center to vertex. Okay, so if I go ahead and freehand and draw in my asymptotes for a hyperbola, and again we'll do this more exactly in, in a little bit with some actual values, but I'm just going to go ahead and draw in an asymptote that has a positive slope that passes through 0, 0, and then another asymptote that has the opposite slope passing through 0, 0. We want to take a look at the slope of these two lines. Well, it turns out that the B value of a hyperbola would be the amount that we would travel, in this case, up or down, that's going to help us measure out the slope of my asymptote. So let me show you. If I were to travel up here a distance of B, we would consider this my rise. And then if I look at the run here for this particular line, the run would be the same as the A value. So my branch, excuse me, not my branch, my asymptote here, would have a slope of rise B run A. In other words, the slope would be B over A. And if we take a look at the other asymptote, we would be rising B, but this time we'd be going to the left a distance of A. And you can see I didn't quite meet it. That was because I was just freehanding in my asymptote. So my other asymptote would have a slope of negative b over a. The asymptotes are always going to have opposite slopes. So for a hyperbola, let me go ahead and draw in the branches. The hyperbola branch, one's going to be opening to the right, the other's opening to the left. It's what we call a horizontal hyperbola. Then the slope of your branches are going to be b over a and negative b over a. Now let's compare that with a vertical hyperbola do my best to see if I can fit that in here, maybe on a smaller scale. So vertical hyperbola, now we're going to travel up and down a distance of A from the center. So if I go down to get to my vertex, there's my vertex, there's my distance of A. And then likewise, I would travel up a distance of A to get to my other vertex. Again, if I just kind of freehand in my asymptotes for now, so one's going to have a positive slope. The other is going to have the negative slope. It's going to be the opposite. And if I were to go ahead and draw in my branches, I'll have a branch that opens to the uh, opens up, and a branch that opens down that approaches those asymptotes. But now, again, if you think about measuring slope, this time to measure my slope, I'm going to rise, and the amount that I'm rising is that a value. So this time, the amount that I'm running is what's going to be defined as our B value. So the slope of my branches in this case, when my hyperbola opens up and down, or it's a vertical hyperbola, we're going to rise A, run B, so my slope is going to be positive A over B. And then in the other case, we'd be going down A and right B, so my other slope is going to be the opposite, negative A over B. So the A and the B values are going to allow us to figure out the slope of the asymptotes. They'll always be opposites, and it'll either be A over B or B over A. Not something that I want you to memorize, but rather, if you'll always just remember that A is the distance from center to vertex, that'll help you figure out whether it's B over A for your slope of the asymptotes or, B, or A over B, because again, a is always distance from center to vertex. So if it's a horizontal hyperbola, the A value is the amount that you were running left and right. And if it's a vertical hyperbola, the A value would be the amount that you were rising up and down. Finally, let's look at the equations for the hyperbolas. You're going to notice that these equations are almost identical to that of an ellipse. The only difference is instead of having two fractions that you're adding, you're going to have subtraction. 
So for a horizontal hyperbola, we'll have the quantity x minus h, the quantity squared, divided by a squared. But now this is going to be minus, so we have some subtraction here, y minus k, the quantity squared, divided by b squared, is equal to 1. So you'll know immediately that this is a hyperbola because you'll see that we have a subtraction. Now, in terms of a and b, a squared, you'll notice, is underneath x. That's how we know this is going to be a horizontal hyperbola, which means we have a horizontal transverse axis. So that's telling us that our hyperbola will have a branch that opens to the left and another branch that opens to the right. And in addition, you'll notice that a squared is first. Now on an ellipse, we always knew a squared was the larger of the two, but that's not necessarily going to be the case for a hyperbola. For an, a hyperbola, we're going to remember that a squared is always first if it's written in this form. Whereas if our hyperbola is a vertical hyperbola, meaning that the branches open up and down, vertical hyperbola, our equation then is going to have the variable y first. So that would be y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared divided by b squared is equal to 1. So again, notice a squared is first. a squared will always be first when hyperbolas are written in this form. We don't care about which one's biggest, we care about which one's first. And a squared is underneath y, so y is first, and that's how we know we have a vertical hyperbola. That means that one branch will open up and the other branch will open down. So in summary, you'll know we have hyperbolas because of the subtraction, number one. Then we'll be taking a look at which variable is first, and that denominator will always be our a squared. If y is first, then our hyperbola is vertical. If x is first, then our hyperbola is going to be horizontal.